Hey guys, welcome back to Snack Time. My name is Ben, and in today's video, we are going to be taking a look at Grimoire. So I am going to show you a little bit about the platform. I'm going to jump in. I'm going to show you how to add some bookmarks. I'm going to show you some of its cool features, and then I'm going to jump in, show you how to install it. Again, we're going to be using Docker. We're going to be using Portainer, and we're going to be using Nginx Proxy Manager to do all the traffic handling. So when you first go to the main page, we can either log in or sign up. I'm going to go ahead and log in. I'm going to type in my username and my password. All right, and once we're in, we are presented with our, you know, our bookmarks that I've already added. Uh, this has different categories, you know, so we can go in here, we can add more categories to so say if you, well, this is a good one. So maybe we have some school bookmarks we want to use. I'm going to put a, uh, a cool little image on there. Let's choose the gamer one. I don't know. <laughs> so I'm going to give it a ugly color and I'm going to give it the parent of no parent, no parent at all. All right. So it's created our school category. We can also uh, create some subcategories. So maybe I want one for math and I'm going to give it that color. I'm going to select my parent of school. I'm going to hit save. And now we have a subcategory, uh, very, very quick and snappy. So let's go ahead and add a bookmark to our math subcategory. But one thing I want you to notice, if you go under subcategories, you kind of lose that add bookmark icon, which kind of would be helpful to have that there. But if we go back to home, let's add a math related website. So let's click on add bookmark and let's add uh, MathWorks. So I'm going to do HTTPS mathworks.com. It is kind of jumpy when you when you first add it in there. It, it tries to kind of, you know, I think it tries to query it too fast. I'm not sure if that's something I did or just a problem, but let's click on here and let's click on school. So let's see, just type in and nothing comes up there try school no options there let's head had that's strange it doesn't give you the subcategory whenever you're selecting your category there not a problem let's see if we can add it to our subcategory as soon as it gets done so what it's doing now is it's reaching out and pulling a lot of information uh, about the website so we're just gonna have to give it a little bit of time all right, so we got this right here. It wasn't able to get a thumbnail. That's okay. But let's see if we can move it. And as you see, if, and one thing you'll notice that I, I pressed the button twice instead of being patient. So it went ahead and added a second one for me. Very, very generous of it. I'm gonna remove that. And let's go in and edit it. And let's see, can we add it under math? No, we can't. Let's try school math, maybe, no. Just math, no. Mm -mm. Yeah, so stay away from subcategories. Apparently it's bugged. Again, very new. We kind of, we, we kind of knew this, kind of expecting it. Just uh, wanted to introduce you a little bit to the platform. As you can see, most of the time it will get like thumbnails and, and we didn't give it any information at all about these. And we basically just gave it a URL. It went out and grabbed the thumbnail. It grabbed uh, like the description of the site. It pulled content. So it pulled like a little bit of the HTML content or text content as well. And I think it's also supposed to kind of keep up if a like, site changes, it's supposed to notify you. I think that's that's the result of, or that's the that's the intention of, of this whole thing is just to be able to add a site You'll know when it's updated, uh, like new sites and stuff. I think that's that's pretty cool. It does have an AI component uh, that is coming. So if we jump under settings, you can see that it can give it an AI features. And if you create a uh, either an open AI API or this Oyama, Olama, <laughs> you can also it'll I guess incorporate some AI features that has still yet to come. It's kind of on the roadmap but something that is, is pretty cool and something that I don't think uh, Link Warden does out of the box. We can change our theme. Obviously it has to have dark mode. 
Let's enable animations. It's neat. So we got animations, but we just can't move our our URLs to subcategories. That is okay. I don't need subcategories, neither do you. <laughs> so um, after that, it's you know you have all your categories here. Uh, it's kind of listing everything that's in every category, but you can uh, dive down and only select the ones that you care about. Uh, let's see. Another thing to look at. Uh, no community yet. That's fine. So it doesn't have a mobile app, but it does have some browser extensions and add-ons. Uh, it has one for Firefox and one for Chrome. Uh, I'm running Brave, so that's basically my Chrome right here. So I went ahead and installed it. Puts a little icon up there at the top. And once we provide it with our URL for our site, it's just going to add us, ask us for our username and our password. Let's do info. It's nan. And um, my password. All right, so we are signed in. That's cool. All right, we can add bookmarks from here. Right, that's fine. What if I don't want to add a bookmark? All right, so all right, cool. Let's jump over to Namecheap and let's see if we can add this one. So, oh, cool. So if we just click on the icon at the top, it's just going to give us the ability to quickly add. And look, I can add it into my map here. So. That's very bizarre. So get the add on, apparently. <laughs> Let's jump back to our grimoire. Let's do a refresh, see if it's picked it up. Oh, it has. And it's put it under math. All right. Well, that's awesome. It's, I guess it's a little easier to add it with the extension than it is from the actual site. Uh, if we click on that, look, math's shown up. But if we go under here, is math there now? Hey, math's at the top. Was I just not scrolling up? All right, let me do this. I got to figure this out. So let's jump over here. Let's create another. Let's say it. it's uh, English. I'll make it green and put a book and put a parent of what school? All right, cool. All right, so we got that. Let's add a URL. Let's do it the old fashioned way of clicking the button. And let's just add dpsenglish.com. Gotta be fast on your keyboard. All right, if you click on that, and no, it's just not there. All right, cool. I'm not crazy, and you're not crazy either. And that's, that's we're both crazy, and then that's okay. But it's apparently, as soon as you add it uh, through the extension, it will probably open it up so you can add it here. That it's Probably a bug, probably something they're already aware of. We can add it quickly to, to school, which is fine. But, you know, we're not going to be able to really kind of edit it or anything uh, until we add it through the, the little browser extension. It seems to be a lot quicker to do it through the browser extension, too. Don't know if you notice it. I've clicked add and I know that it's still doing its thing. And if I click it again, it's just going to add a second one. Well, look, it's. Looks like it's kind of it's already done it in the background. It just didn't close. So that's weird. Whatever. All right. So if we go, let's check out our Nginx proxy man. So let's check out one more site and prove my theory. Let's go. Let's just go to GitHub and let's click on the Grimoire icon. And yep, there it is. So English <laughs> weird. All right, we'll just add bookmark. There's not really an easy way for you to kind of import your bookmarks that I have seen. And if you go under your profile, it's basically just going to kind of give you your history. Uh, there's nothing really there to help you out with that. I'm sure it's probably on its way. Uh, settings doesn't have really too much in it other than, you know, the, the UI and the AI feature, which again is not implemented. But like I said, it is growing. It is being actively developed. Uh, we can kind of jump back here and see that he's even done stuff as early as last week. So maybe, hey, you know, never know one of the uh, builds he's got out might actually fix some of the things that we're running into today. But if you're interested in a new project and following along with him on this, I do think that he's a very dedicated programmer 
and seems to be very, very excited about this project. So, so one more thing that I want to show you real fast before I show you how to install it is how to get to the admin panel, since there really doesn't appear to be a link around here, at least one that I am not finding. So if you go to the end of your URL and just type in slash admin, that will open up your admin panel. So you'll basically be able to see the users that have signed up and don't know if you've noticed that some of these uh, headers at the top here aren't really matching up. My category count is over here where it says email. So probably a little bit to be done there. I know the admin panel is pretty new. Uh, the pocket based settings is read only and there's nothing in this section. I believe that's because I've specified everything through the Docker container and that's probably for the best. Uh, let's see. So let's jump over and let me show you how to install that. So if you head off to the main page, which is grimoire.pro, you'll get uh, his you know home screen here down at the at the very bottom. We have the GitHub page and click on that. All right, so if we head off to the GitHub page for Grimoire, we can scroll down and eventually we'll run into this uh, Docker Compose file. We can drop this little arrow down. And if we scroll down a little bit more, uh, this is the basic uh, like uh, Grimoire Docker Compose. But I found that it kind of needs uh, Pocket Base 2, and this doesn't load that for you. So when I was searching around, you know, find the best way to load this so I don't have any issues, I discovered one of these uh, guys has put a, a really good compose file together that has the pocket base already rolled into it. So I have went ahead and added that to my GitHub page. So if you go to github.com slash snack time, and we headed off to YouTube and YouTube again and Grimoire. Now I have my Docker Compose and my environmental file. So I'm going to be using both of these guys to deploy it with Portainer. All right, once we've signed into Portainer, let's head over to Stacks and let's create our stack for Grimoire. All right, and I'm going to jump back to my Docker Compose file. Basically, just going to copy all the contents of this file. So I'm going to hit copy. I'm going to jump back to Portainer and paste. Now I do need my environmental file too. You don't need to do anything crazy with that. We're just going to copy its contents. So let's head back Go into the sample. Copy this one, go back to Portainer. And down here at the bottom, I'm gonna click Advanced and I'm gonna paste the contents of that file right there. So it strips out all the comments, which is totally fine. It gives you the stuff that you're going to need. Uh, the, the root email, it doesn't really matter what that is. It's not gonna be emailing anything. This password can be whatever you want it to be. I would suggest something something better than super secret password, but hey, man, it's up to you. Um, and then the public origin, that also doesn't really matter, but if it makes you feel any better, you know, you can definitely change that to be whatever you want. Mine works fine just as the default. Uh, the port, I don't care about. We're not gonna be running anything on any sort of external ports. Everything is gonna be going through Nginx Proxy Manager. All right, so let's jump back up here to the, uh, to the composer file. So I can kind of explain a little bit about what it's doing. I'm going to kind of take it line by line. We're going to jump in here and we're going to initially download pocket base version 0.22. I'm uh, going to say that it will restart unless it's stopped. Uh, the volumes that we're going to create are going to be this uh, PB underscore data. And this is the path that's going to go to under the container. Uh, can skip the health check for now. Uh, we're going to be looking for this .env file, but probably not going to find it because Portainer is going to supply that for them. So let's comment this out. All right, we keep scrolling down. Uh, Grimoire uh, is the container that uh, Pocket Base is going to depend on, so that one's going to have to be there and operational. Uh, we keep scrolling down uh, some more volumes that we're mapping. Uh, let's see here, that's fine. 
and everything else is pretty much good to go. And I've already commented out the ports section here, but if you did decide that you you wanted to run Grimoire and you didn't want to run it through Nginx Proxy Manager, uncomment out those, po those ports and then come down here and just specify the port that you want to run you know, your Grimoire on. So let's try to deploy this. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom, click deploy. So now that we've deployed our container, let's go ahead and set up our our DNS record. And for this, I'm going to use Namecheap, but you can use whatever you want to. I'm going to click on add new record and I'm going to select a record. I'm just going to call this Grim and I'm going to use the same IP address as my other things that are set up. That's my external IP address. I'm going to save these changes. All right, so I have grim.senhow.com set up. Well, let's jump back over to Portainer. Let's go to my dashboard. Let's jump back over and make sure that our Nginx proxy manager is joined to our Grimoire network. So we go under containers and go under Nginx app. And if we scroll all the way to the bottom, all right, so I don't have my Grimoire network here, so I'm going to have to join it. So I'm going to drop this down where it says select network and I'm going to hit Grimoire default. And then I'm going to click this join network button over here on the right. All right, so now that we've joined our Nginx proxy manager to the same network as Grimoire, we now have to add a host. So if we jump in here and click on add host, and let's give it the name that we set up on Namecheap, grim.senhow.com. All right, and we had the host name was just Grimoire. Easy enough. The port, do you remember what that was? Well, it was back in the environmental files. So if we jump back over to our, um, our GitHub here, you'll be able to discover the port right here. It's 5173. So we're going to copy that. I'm going to head on back. And we're going to paste the port here. I'm going to block common exploits. I'm going to enable WebSocket support and I'm going to hit save. Now, one thing I do want it to be is secure. So I want to add the HTTPS element to that as well so that my traffic is encrypted. And so I'm going to go under edit again. And I'm going to go to SSL. I'm going to request a new certificate. I'm going to force and I'm going to agree. Hit save. And here in a second, Let's Encrypt will give me a new certificate and we'll be able to go to our new secure site. All right, so I think we're ready to go now. We have our traffic set up, encrypted, it's online. Let's click on the grim.senhow.com. All right, cool. So we're doing good. Uh, we did arrive at the setup wizard for the very first user. So the user that you're going to create now will be the, the kind of the admin user. So you'll want to do that you know, relatively quickly. I wouldn't, you know, leave it out there. So for my username, I'm just going to pick Ben. And display name is Ben. And my email address is going to be info at the next time .com. Password can be anything you want it to be. All right, and sign up. All right, so once you're at this page, feel free to start, you know, making changes. You can create a new category, call this one general. I'm going to give it, there you go. And can I delete the default one? I don't know if I can or not. No, you got to keep it around. Oh, well. <laughs> so that pretty much sums up the installation and setup of Grimoire. If you found this video helpful, I definitely encourage you to like or subscribe. And if you want to, you can always leave me a comment down below. Thanks so much for watching. You guys take it easy.